Welcome to the Triple Threat, ladies and gentlemen. Now, a couple of things. One, my neighbors are playing music in the background, so there's nothing I can do about that. I can't filter that out. You may hear some music. Hopefully, it's not too loud. Two, I filmed my Gump report, but unfortunately, I didn't notice until I did the editing that the lighting was dark. Darker than this. So... I'm sorry if the video looks dark when you finally do see it because I did do the Vince video. I did edit the video and it'll be ready and be sent up Monday or Tuesday. It depends on what I'm doing that day. But the, it will be going up and it will basically be telling you that I'm going to be producing the video that you're about to see right now and it'll be released today. Yes, it's late in the night, but it took me some time to actually watch USA Power and... OVW TV episode 1194 and I got my thoughts on that. I'm not doing a review of it. I'm giving you my thoughts on it. Let's talk about power. Did we get a good power? Yes, we did. The I'm not going to be heavily, really heavy reviewing this, but I did like the triple threat of Odinson, of Josiah, Judas, not Josiah, Judas, and AJ Kazanin. I mean, the person who looked the best there was, well, Odinson. I like Odinson of the end. I always liked him. But I'm going to be truthful. I thought it was going to be AJ was going to win this. I did not think Judas was going to win. I did not think it. But I did wonder, wouldn't it have been interesting if Odinson was taken over by the Sinister Minister and instead of him being in the end, he's now with the Sinister Minister? That's what I would have thought. That would be very interesting. But Odinson won. What happened to Pero? I'm wondering what happened with him. Why is he not there? Is he injured? I could be wrong. Maybe he's not injured. Or maybe he's just not was able to be at ringside because you need a manager license. So that's what it felt like for me personally. Odinson winning is a great thing. I've always thought Odinson had something special. But I've never been fond of him using that spray. <sighs> ah! That, I never liked it when the end did that. I'm kind of hoping they move away from that. Next, we got a very weird match of the Thrill, Bil the Thrill Billy, Sil Silvel, Sivel, Sivel. And who, what, is that a woman? I, I'm not trying to bash nobody. I'm not saying that that's, a, I, it sounds like a man, but is it a woman? Or is that a man? You guys can tell me below if you know about the situation between those two. Dealing with Murdoch. Murdoch, fine. He's still giving off that same attitude as he did before. And it was a whack. He gave him, you could hear it in the arena. And I got to say something about the arena in a minute. I will say something about the fans in the arena. But when you heard the hits he gave this guy, when he gave the Thrill Billy hits you heard it it was that loud you thought he might have gave him concussion that's how loud that bitch was when he went <laughs> like that it sounded like he tried to give him a freaking concussion now of course we know murdoch was not going to lose here even in an, in a non-title match there's no way now when the pope came out after the interview was started and tried to show a little respect you make it makes you think well the champion series Finally, the Pope is going to try and do something. He may try to cash in on the world champion. And he pretty much says, after your win, why wasn't I allowed to be there? But I'm here now, and I'm giving you my respect. But you got Murdoch walking off. Fine. It makes you wonder how far they're going to go with Pope when it comes to the situation. And maybe at, what, NWA 74, will we actually get a match between the Pope and the Murdoch. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I've been wanting for quite a while. Since I've been watching Power, I wanted to see the Pope try to go for that damn title. Now, it's not that black people have never had it. It's just that I wanted to see the Pope have it. Let's move on. Now, what did we get here when it came to... <sighs> uh, look, I'm not against... Ricky Morton's son. It, it, it just feels like he needs more. I don't know what's missing with him. He is missing something. Kerry Morton is missing something. 
Maybe he needs to exercise more. Maybe he just needs to work on a stick. Maybe it's got to be something. I just don't know what's missing with him. There, he's missing something. And I'm not saying it's his father's fault. And I'm not saying that his father being with him is wrong. But it feels like with Carrie Morton, there's something missing. It's probably going to develop in time. Maybe it's charisma. His ring work isn't that bad. It's okay. His look in the ring is lacking a little bit. He needs more definition. I think a person of his size should be more defined. Not that I want him cock diesel, but I think that he needs something physically. Because no matter what you say, what makes a pro wrestler is their stick, their charisma, their look, their ring work, and can they tell a story in the ring. That is the five tools, no matter what you think. These are the five tools that is needed to work, even in this day and age. If you actually think ring work will get you over 100%, that's bullshit. Because at certain points, ring work will not be enough. Now, I, I just don't know what it is. And last but not least, Billy did make an announcement that by, what is it, the next um, pay-per-view, we will have Dash to the Cash. Now, they're going to do a number one contendership for the Trevor Murdoch title at 74. Now, the Pope I want to see there doesn't mean he will be there, but that's what I want to see. But we finally get something. We finally get something interesting. Tim Storm has been allowed to be part of the Dash to the Cash. No, no, no. What is it? Um, the, no, sorry. Not the Dash to the Cash. The Race to the chase. I'm sorry I said dash to the cash. I kind of like dash to the cash kind of more than race to the chase. But the dash to the cash should be its own pay-per-view. Hey, Billy, call a pay-per-view dash to the cash. I think it'll be cool. But the race to the chase has a number one contendership. Who wins it will be going up against the Trevor Murdoch. And now Tim Storm, who has been basically banned from ever doing it because of what happened in the beginning of what was the NWA season two back in 2019 when they rebooted themselves on YouTube made it very clear when he had his shot to the title, when Nick Aldis had it, he had one more shot. If he lost, he would never go after that title again. Now that's been rescinded because of one person. It was not Nick Aldis who said, I'm not, I, I can't leave it like this even though he's a face. I can't leave it like this anymore. I got to go to Billy and re re reverse it. No. Trevor Murdoch was the one who made that choice. So now Trevor has now set up Tim Storm to get a shot. And oh, almost forgot. If you have seen Thunder Rosa's show talking about eating tacos and having talk, Lance Archer actually knew Trevor. and No, not Trevor. Tim Storm. And he said Tim didn't look so good when he was in TNA. Yeah, if you didn't know, and I didn't know, Trevor Murdoch was traveling around WWE. I'm sure he went to TNA maybe once, but Tim Storm went to TNA at one point. He wasn't the same person he is now, but there you go. Now, USA, and guys, I don't know what's going on with USA. Not that the camera work was bad. No, not that the lighting was bad. Actually, the camera work was fine. The lighting was fine. What happened to the graphics? And what happened to the scheduling of how you set up your matches in USA? Because, well, in power, there was no graphics for the people. They usually would say the names of the people there. Maybe Billy decided to pull it because it really wasn't necessary because of the commentators. But honestly, it still needed it. Because since they're not like a big company anymore, they're not doing huge amounts of computer graphics. Whatever graphics they use, they should leave it in there. That's what I believe. They can't be that old school, like back in the 60s when barely they had computer graphics in them. I'd rather them still have graphics that at least look something like the 1980s. Now, we had Jax Dean destroy somebody. Wasn't a great match. Now, the guy was from the Country Gentleman. Since I've not been watching NWA Power in USA for a while, I missed out on them. So, I don't know if the country gentlemen are a good tag team or not. I'll find out eventually. I was not surprised that he was destroyed by Jack Steen. But the question is going to be, who is going up against Jack Steen? 
Next, we get what? Angelina Love versus Genocide. What was that? Look, match was fine. I love me Angelina Love. Yeah, I, I know that everyone loves Angelina Love because of the beautiful people. Not everybody like Velvet Sky and the beautiful people either. I know there's more than a few people that just never liked the beautiful people when they came, they came around. They thought they were just overrated. Now, I've seen the beautiful people, at least in the tail end of their career. They're not that bad. They're actually better than Twin Magic of the Bellas. Let's, let's make this clear. This is the beautiful people. This is the Bellas. No matter how you play it, Nikki and Brie are this low. And when it comes to Velvet Sky and Angela Love, they're here. They're here. And they're here. No matter what anybody says. So, we get a very strange match. That, of course, Angelina could not win against... Well, they are not going to be pushing Angelina that quickly. She had to be destroyed by a... Well, almost destroyed. By a joke. Well, you know what's getting me? When you see Genocide throw her and she rolls out the ring. And she's getting counted. And she heads over to Velvet who is telling her, Girl, don't worry. Get up. You can do this. You're a seven-time champ. Get in that ring. And, he said, and she's saying, I'm not here for this. Or something. It was like... What are they trying to build up? Are they trying to build a story between Velvet Sky and Angela Love, trying to get Velvet to go back into the ring? Are they either this is one of three things? One, they're trying to get Velvet Sky to get back into the ring for one more match, and it will be with Angela Love, who she knows will take care of her. Two, it will be Velvet Sky getting back into the ring and going after that title from Camille because Camille and her still could have a match because she still has. Basically, the champion series under her belt, and she does still have an opportunity to go after that title. Or three, this is maybe trying to help genocide, which I don't know how it is. Because, yes, Angela Love is a legend. Yes, Velvet Sky is a legend. But how are you going to book a genocide using Velvet Sky with Angela Love to get her over so she'll mean something going after Camille? I don't know. Now, the segments we had. Guys, when it comes to, and I didn't say anything about this, I, 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 what are they doing with Stevens and Mae Valentine? I know that this was on power. I believe this was on power. Was it on power? Um, the section on, was it USA? Um, yes, it was on US, it was on power, not USA, but I got to talk about it now. What the hell was that? Where they didn't go to, they didn't go to Brazil. That he's still there, but he's no longer part of in-ring competition. And they're supposedly having a life together. I, I'm, I'm going, what is that? What, 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 what? I, I don't know what to think of that. I don't know if this is going to be a great thing. Is it a bad thing? Look, May is a gorgeous woman. She has a moment to look in. Really, sl well, I'm trying to make this clear. I'm not against Mae Valentine. She's just not a great, com great, either as a commentator or as an interviewer. She just doesn't fit the bill. But as a manager, I do believe she can get away with it. Her beauty and her mouth will work well. But here, I don't know what to think of this. If she's going to become Aaron Stevens' manager, that makes sense. They're just building up into it. And I don't mind seeing it. Now, what is the guy, um, where is it, where is it? I'm trying to see. The, um, what is the guy's name? The Stan Drill. I believe that's his name. The Stan, Stan Drill. Or the Stan Drill Show, as I'm going to call it. What the fuck is that? Oh, it's stupid. It looks stupid, but it's interesting. Seeing him interview people where his own image comes to the sides like this, like this. Interesting. And that's on USA, not power. It's good to see they are using other things to make things interesting. Now, the final thing. The junior heavyweight title of VSK versus Homicide was a good match. I had no problem with the matches here on the show. I did enjoy the matches. The only thing I wonder, where are they going with Homicide? And I don't want to hear Homicide ever again on the interview. 
You sound like he's damn drunk. Guys, look, I'm not against Homicide. He is a legend. He earned his stripes as a wrestler. And there have been points I've heard Homicide when he talks. Now, sometimes he hits the mark great. Other times he sounds like he's freaking drunk. And when he was on the mic with... with uh, he sounded like he was drunk. So for me, if this is how it's going to always be, please have someone talk for him. Or not let him talk much at all. Make it brief. Now, USA and Power are pretty good. If you've seen it already, I'm sure you understand. It's not a bad show. So now... Okay, got to get myself ready. Ah, OVW TV, episode 1,194. I have barely seen the product of OVW. I've seen maybe a couple of snippets when it talked about Batista, when it came to Brock Lesnar, when it came to John Cena, when it came to anybody like that. I have maybe seen a couple of snippets, but never the full show. Barely at all. If I've ever seen something of it, other than videos from the WWE, it has been incredibly brief. So when you look at this episode, I'm going like, okay, I got an open mind. When it came to MLW, I haven't seen MLW 153. I believe 153 I'm about to watch because I saw, no, 152. I think the next one's 152. So it's either 152 or 153 that's coming up. I have not seen it. I'm going to see it this Sunday. Not seen it after I do this. But I'm like... Okay, so far, let's check out another promotion. Let's see what's going on. I wanted to do this for quite a while. Start jumping around the promotion, see what's interesting, and what catches my eye. So, you want to know how I felt when I watched OVW TV? I'm going like, what the fuck happened? If you like OVW, more power to you. What I just saw from episode 1194... Is the most garbage show I've ever seen. The wrestlers didn't look very good. The lighting didn't look very good. The camera work was okay. The commentators sucked. Now, let me break this down. They got several titles. I didn't know what they were. The Kentucky World Heavyweight Champion. The World Heavyweight Champion. The Rush, World, the Rush Champion. And the Women's World Champion. I don't know if they got... Women's Tag Championships. I don't know if they got a TV title. I don't know. Only thing I know is what they just presented on this show. Now, when it comes to the Kentucky match, well, the Kentucky champion, that didn't even feel right. The guy who was the champ looked like he did not know what he was doing. The other guy, supposedly, that he was a strongman and won a strongman competition, didn't act like a strongman. He looked weak. I don't know what it was. Maybe they were both off. Maybe they got no chemistry. But that match was trash. Trash. But I, I'm sure that most of the time, they don't let their champions job too often. So when it came to Kentucky champion, what was his name? Um, Dustin Jackson. He did not lose. Fine. Now, I'm not going to say a lot about the show. But I'm going to say this about the Fallen. If that's the name. What was it? The Bad Word or The Fallen? I'm sure it's The Fallen. That's the name of the team. I like what I saw. You got four guys. Each one of them wildly different. One of them got in black wings, which goes with The Fallen. I like that. The thing I liked the most, but then pissed me off at the same time, was the mic. Hello. How are you? Ha, 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 ha. Having a altered voice through the mic was gorgeous. I loved it. I wish Impact Wrestling or even AEW would take that and run with it. Particularly, like, with DK. Wouldn't it be interesting that DK changed and became more dark and more sinister and they use a voice work like that? And the guy, the first one to talk, I think he was the, the reverend or the minister, he sounded perfect with that voice. But then it pissed me off when he handed the mic to someone else and instead of them turning off the augmented voice feature on the on the soundboard they have because look the audio guy has a soundboard he can add in any type of voice he wants make your voice sound light make his voice sound quiet make your voice sound like Mickey Mouse make your voice sound any way he wants if it's programmed in what he should have did 
was can't turn that off instantly and leave it only for the Reverend. Everybody else used a regular voice. That is what I wanted. I wanted this Reverend, if that was the Reverend, the guy in pitch black, who had one eye that was glazed, and I am the Reverend, and this is the Fallen. I loved it. I'm telling you, I've not seen a stick like that with audio work, a good look, and a good way of talking with his his um, donation, donation, um, what is it, tray. I love that. But then when he had everyone else talk, they should have turned off the feature and just leave it for him, making him so unique. And he made it for everybody. And that turned me off. That pissed me off. That it should have been set, set. When you have a stick for one person, who's supposed to be the leader? Leave it for that person, man or woman, no matter what. He should have had the voice work only. It would make perfect sense. He's the leader. If that was him, if he was the leader. It shouldn't be for everyone else. But letting the other three talk was wrong. Now, was the match behind it bad? No. What was it? Luster. Luster or something. That was his name. He has a very unique look. He got puffied out curly hair. Look, I got curly hair even though I'm balded out, unfortunately. Unfortunately, being as old as I am and stressed out that I get, my hair falls out. So... When you see this guy, he was good. I liked him. Now, for the women. They did have the women's champion there in a tag team. It wasn't bad, but I don't know. It, it didn't feel right. And I think the major issue for me was that it was the lighting just made the entire thing feel drab. Look, even the world champion at the very end losing to some guy who's called the veteran. It was an all right match, but the lighting just turned me off. Remember with Bray White, when it was all red, when he came out at first, a blinding, eye-searing red. You can do that with blue. Now, mind you, the blue was not usually apparent, but it's still too bluish. And then on top of that, when it came to the world champion of OVW, tell me, if you watch that episode at the very end, what did you see? Did you see him? Or did you see them flipping back and forth very sloppily with his Titan Tron video? His intro. Why did you do that? Why? I understand if they don't have a Titan Tron. Yeah, they don't. Like all eight, not not all age. Um, Ro, Reality Wrestling didn't have a Titan Tron either. But they made sure they did something, at least back in 2015 and 16 when I did review it, when they ever did show someone's intro, if they need to show it, and they had no screen, they put it on a big screen, at least once I saw, and had the person in a small screen, and then they switched it at least once or twice I saw. But here, they were flipping back and forth. It was so sloppy. Oh my gosh. It was so sloppy. It was disgustingly sloppy. And that turned me off to even caring about this guy who was champ that now he got pinned. It was a non-title like the rest of the show. He got pinned. It felt like nothing. And yes, there was one match where one guy was messing about, talking shit about his son who just had just his wife had given birth. So that sounds like an interesting story. But I'm going like, the lighting turned me off. The audio, particularly with the commentators... I don't like the commentators. I don't know. Maybe they got to grow on me. But the commentators just sounded too damn cheesy. They didn't sound really good. And then the audio kept clicking off, on and off. It happened when they were introducing people. When the announcer was talking, the audio cut out. When the commentators were talking, somewhat, a, a few times, the audio cut off on them. When anybody was in the ring, the audio also, when it came to the Fallen, even the audio was cutting. It was disgusting. Now, this could have been a bad day for OVW TV. And I'm going to try and be open-minded. I'll try and check it again. I don't mean I will watch this again and do um, just tell you what I think about it again. I may watch it again. I don't know what will happen after this. this um, I don't even know if there's going to be a number three of this triple threat. I don't know yet. But if I do another show... 
Maybe I'll go back to reality wrestling and take a look at that. Or try another show. I don't know. I don't know. I thought of checking out ICW or uh, DTT or DDT. I don't know. Since I could check out Pro Wrestling Noah. I could check out All Japan Pro Wrestling. There's some places I think I can check them out. And DDT and maybe Dragon Gate. But when it comes to the Japanese shows, since there's no all English there, I can only tell you what I saw, just not what was stated. So I'm thinking about it. But you guys tell me below. I hope you enjoyed this triple threat. Give me a comment below. Bye.